Today I want to share with you how to make hot water cornbread. This is a depression era recipe that uses only three ingredients that I'm confident you probably have in your pantry. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to click on the little notification bell below. That'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Well, this hot water cornbread couldn't be easier to make. And as I said, it only requires three ingredients, four if you count the water. Now this is one of those recipes that has many variations. Uh, your family may have its own variation, another family will have a slight different variation. And so what I'm going to do is just show you how to make the very basic hot water cornbread. But I'll discuss some of the different variations. Now don't worry, you don't need to write any of this down. If you open the description underneath this video, you'll see the word recipe with a link next to it. And if you click on that, that'll take you over to my website, uh, marysnest.com, same name here as my YouTube channel. And there you'll be able to read the recipe online or you can print it out. Now what I've got here are two cups of a medium stone ground cornmeal. You can use any type of cornmeal that you have. Some people will use self-rising cornmeal. And self-rising cornmeal is generally easier to find in the South, so don't, or the South part of the United States, but don't worry if you don't have that. What self-rising cornmeal is, is cornmeal to which a little baking powder and a little salt has already been added. Now, if you want to make that homemade, you certainly can. I'll have it all, I'll explain how to do it in the written recipe, but it's really not necessary. If you want, you can add some baking powder, uh, maybe about a teaspoon of baking powder to this, uh, but again, it's really not necessary. And next, over here, I've got two tablespoons of lard. Lard is very traditional when making hot water cornbread, but if you don't want to use lard or you don't have lard, you can substitute another type of fat. You could certainly use butter or you could use ghee, which is a clarified butter. That might work very well when it comes to cooking it. But the reason that I like to add some fat into the cornmeal mixture is it does help to make the final uh, hot cornbread, uh, hot water cornbread, uh, more moist. This can be a very dry, type um, creation, so to speak. But by adding this little bit of fat, and this is two tablespoons, I highly recommend, depending on what, what amount you make, for every cup of cornmeal, you have one tablespoon of some type of fat. It really does help the texture. And the final ingredient is one teaspoon of salt. And I've just got a plain, fine ground sea salt here. You can use whatever you have. And then you're going to need some hot water, about a cup and a half to two cups for two cups of cornmeal. Uh, you got to play it by ear a little, and I'll explain why in a minute, uh, that you've boiled, uh, brought to a boil and is very hot, uh, either on the stove or in your tea kettle. Now, as to other ingredients, as I mentioned, you can add a little baking powder if you want, but it's really not necessary. And some people will add a little bit of sugar. Uh, for two cups of cornmeal, maybe two tablespoons of sugar. And these are all things that can help to improve the flavor, uh, but really are not necessary. And I would just want to go back for a minute and mention the lard. This is just plain lard. It is from pastured pigs, but it's just plain lard. It's not the leaf lard, which I think is the lard that comes from around the kidneys. Uh, that's often uh, considered the prized lard and is very good when it comes to baking. Uh, but for something like this, just plain lard will work just fine. Now, as to the consistency of the batter, I like to make this almost like a pancake batter. Some people will add less water and make this more uh, thick and then shape the little cornmeal cakes, <laughs> cornbread cakes, uh, almost like if you were making a hamburger patty and then fry them up like that. But I think making them like a cornbread, um, like a pancake batter uh, and then frying them like little pancakes makes for a crispier, tastier treat. And speaking of frying, you will need some additional fat to fry up 
the cornbread in. Um, now, since I'm using lard in here, I'm also using lard in my frying pan. And I don't have much. I'll take a picture and overlay so you can see exactly how much oil I have in the frying pan. Um, literally just uh, what's on the bottom of my frying pan. You will see recipes that will call for quite a bit of oil. And basically, at that point, what you're doing is deep frying the cornbread. And you can certainly do that. If so, uh, rather than a frying pan, I would recommend using something that has higher sides to protect you uh, from the splattering oil. And if you do want to deep fry them, rather than making them into a pancake batter, I think you're better off having a slightly thicker batter and then like what I talked about earlier, where you kind of make them into what looks like a hamburger patty and then putting those in to be deep fried. And once again, going back to the lard, I just wanted to mention that if you have bacon grease, the, dri the drippings from cooking bacon, uh, you can definitely use that too. And it'd probably impart a wonderful flavor uh, into the cornbread. Now, I just wanna mention about this recipe overall. This is the type of recipe that's very good to have in your repertoire. Uh, as I've shared with you in the past, we've talked about what I refer to as the four corners pantry, meaning your refrigerator, your freezer, your everyday working pantry, maybe a closet or a cupboard in your kitchen, and then your extended pantry. And your extended pantry is where you keep your backup food supply or your food storage, depending on what you might call it. And that's where you just add little by little over time, different foods that may have a very long shelf life, um, or if a shorter shelf life, just foods that are not perishable. They don't need to be refrigerated or frozen. Foods like salt and cornmeal and lard can fit very well into that category of food storage for your extended pantry, your backup food supply. And it's very important to have uh, recipes for how to use the foods that you may keep in your food storage. And you may be rotating them out, you know, as most of us, I think, do. We rotate them out and bring them into our working pantry so that for the most part, those that don't have very long shelf lives don't go stale and whatnot, especially in the case of, of uh, grains and, and cornmeal like this. But having foods like this on hand and recipes for how to use them can be so helpful, especially if you're not able to get to the grocery store, such as in the case of illness, or in the event that you lose your job and maybe your budget is very tight. And so you've got those extra foods to rely on in your extended pantry and you know what to do with them uh, when your working pantry starts to get a little on the empty side. And things like this are just so important, especially during times like now, uh, when we're going through a national and you know worldwide emergency. Well, let's get to cooking this now. Well, we, as I said, we've got our two cups of cornmeal in here. We're just gonna go ahead and, oh, actually, I think what I'm gonna do is sprinkle the salt in first and just twizzle that around. And it's just a teaspoon of salt. Certainly, uh, if you are on a salt-restricted diet, like many of you have told me, you can leave the salt out. There are recipes that basically just use l the lard or some type of fat and the cornmeal. So that's completely fine too. I'm just gonna get this in here best that I can. It's nice and soft. <laughs> and then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna warm up the uh, water in my tea kettle again and because we want it to be very nice and hot and boiling basically when we go ahead and pour it on the mixture here. Well, this is nice and hot and boiling. So I'm gonna measure out two cups and then we'll just start first adding in maybe just about a half, one and a half cups. And this nice hot water is helping to melt <laughs> this lard. And as you pour that hot water over the lard that's sitting in the cornmeal, it'll start to melt immediately. Then what you wanna do is just take your spatula or your wooden spoon, whatever you have, and just start to mix up your mixture <laughs> until all of your cornmeal is saturated and again depending on what texture that you want is what will determine how much liquid you're going to add if you wanted to add if you wanted to make these into those patties that i talked about earlier you could certainly just add 
that's about the one and a half cup of water. And as you see, it's got a great texture for you to mold. Now, speaking of additional ingredients, like I was sharing in the beginning, some folks will add a tablespoon or two of flour if they do plan on making this into more of that patty type uh, cornbread that they then fry. So that's something you could also do at this point if you decide that you wanna make this into a patty and you find it's not really holding together very well, adding some flour, just to all purpose flour is absolutely fine. But I'm gonna go ahead and add in the rest of this water because as I shared with you, I'll just reserve a little bit just to make sure I don't make it too watery. But as I shared, we're gonna make these more like a pancake batter and they're gonna be delici delicious, a little crispy uh, on, the, on the rim. Uh, it's it's gonna be wonderful. This was a really wonderful recipe you know, during the, de the depression, the uh, Great Depression of the 1930s here in the United States. Uh, this was just a wonderful resource for mothers to have on hand uh, when they didn't have really anything. Maybe they may not have had any flour, they didn't have butter, um, but especially here in the South, they had cornmeal and a little bit of lard, or if they were lucky enough to have bacon and be able to cook bacon and then have the bacon drippings. This was something really wonderful and nutritious that they could serve their families. Now, as you continue to mix this, the, corn, uh, the cornmeal will absorb more of the water. So just keep mixing in as much water as you need until you get something that resembles a a thick pancake batter. Now, keep in mind this is going to be very grainy. I'm just going to turn my heat down. <laughs> I'm getting my fat ready to fry these. Uh, now, keep in mind this is going to be a little grainy, but this is pretty much the consistency that you're looking for. So once you get this to the consistency you like, uh, in my case, we're gonna do kind of the thick pancake batter, we're ready to fry it. And you wanna have your fat melted and on medium heat, but you don't want it smoking. I always find it a little challenging working with this countertop burner, but uh, that's why I had to turn my heat down. So this first one will be our test one. But you wanna take about a quarter of a cup if you're doing the batter version, and you wanna go ahead and just pour that right into your hot oil. Ooh, good simmer. And then we're just gonna let that cook. And then as the edges start to brown up a bit, we'll get ready to turn it. It's probably gonna be about maybe three minutes or so. Well, I let that cook for about three minutes or so on one side, and then I flipped it over. And now I'm gonna continue to let it cook. And in the meantime, I got a plate ready with some paper towels. And as I cook each of these uh, hot, hot water cornbreads, these little individual, they're almost like uh, silver dollar pancakes, the small pancakes, I'm gonna put them on these paper towels to drain. You can also put them if you have one like a, a cooling rack uh, that you use when you take cookies and stuff out of the oven, you can do that too. However, I find that letting them be blotted on some type of towel, uh, creates the crispiest um, cornbread. Well, I just finished cooking my last one and I wanna show you up close how lovely they look. Now, some I did let go, you know, I had said in the beginning three to five minutes, you know, everybody's cooktop's different. I found that mine really needed the five minutes um, to get a nice uh, crispy exterior and a nicely golden brown color. Well, these came lovely and they look so tasty. They really do remind me of uh, silver dollar pancakes, but I'm anxious to give them a taste. Now I'm just gonna take these plain, they have a nice crispy crust, crust to them. I'm just gonna take this plain, but I would imagine anything on top of these, uh, melted butter, uh, some jam, uh, maple syrup, I think anything would be delicious. Mmm. That's quite good. Even plain, they have a lovely flavor to them. Even without any, we didn't add any sugar, even without sugar. The taste of the corn really comes through. 
and they have a nice little crunch to them. Well, I hope you'll give these a try. They're a lot of fun and it's good to know how to make uh, a quick and easy little pantry dish from anything you might have you know, in your food storage or your extended pantry or even your everyday working pantry. But if you'd like more ideas for pantry meals, be sure to click on this video over here. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.